Nowadays, more and more rocket companies are moving toward reusability. Whether this is partial or full, practically all next-generation launch vehicles have some sort of reuse plan to help with cost and launch cadence. Vulcan, however, which just launched for the first time last month, is somewhat unique in that it's a brand new, fully expendable rocket. While its launch was successful, it was the first and only launch of that specific upper stage, first stage, 2BE4 engines, etc. In other words, all that hardware, despite its build quality, was used once and now is done. This being said, ULA has plans to alter the vehicle and even reuse the two BE4 engines in future launches. Here I'll go more in depth into the company's plan, the reuse benefits, Vulcan's future, and more. For a while now, ULA CEO Tori Bruno has expressed his opinion on reusability and whether or not it's worth it. For example, he's mentioned that upper stages that are reused should do so in space. This being said, booster reuse, and specifically the Vulcan engine section, is something he has been adamant about. Just over a week ago, during a presentation at Spacecom 2024, he talked about Vulcan upgrades and the importance of not wasting the two BE-4 engines on each launch. As far as how they plan to upgrade the vehicle, ULA has been working on a solution. At its core, recovery of hardware from space requires atmospheric reentry, deceleration, and landing. Reentry can be accomplished either by retro propulsion or by utilizing the atmosphere to decelerate the object via aerodynamic drag. Atmospheric deceleration at reentry velocities requires an aeroshell featuring a thermal protection system or TPS to protect the payload. The aeroshell has historically been limited in diameter and area by the launch vehicle shroud. However, ULA has been focusing on an emerging technology named HIAD, which stands for Hypersonic Inflatable Aerodynamic Decelerator, an inflatable structure with flexible TPS. In terms of a future Vulcan mission profile, after separation, the nose assembly extends to position the HIAD such that it will clear the separation plane when inflated. Preliminary results indicate a 10 to 12 meter HIAD will be required to recover the booster module. From here, it would continue through Earth's atmosphere before parachute deployment. This would slow down the two BE-4s and additional technology significantly before a planned soft water landing. Here, they would float on an inflatable aeroshell before being recovered by ULA and taken back to land for refurbishment. In regard to this approach, Tori Bruno commented that after a landing, assuming it was successful, the initial engines would likely return to the factory for a full checkout. Later on, they intend to inspect and reinstall them at the Cape. He also pointed out that making sure the two engines weren't exposed to salt water would be very important. In a quote, he said, The key is to not get them wet. Fortunately, the exit plane of the Bells sits over 20 feet above the water, also developing options for spray shields, he said. Late last year, Tori showed off a few videos of full-scale test articles in the ocean. These very clearly demonstrate what the company is hoping to achieve. With work actively being done, the question becomes when will they actually implement this tech onto Vulcan? In another quote, Tori said, In terms of our engine recovery, this is going to happen within a handful of years. I don't want to say exactly when because it's part of the contract we have with one of our customers at this time, and we're not releasing the details of that. But it will take a couple of years to actually be reusing the engine, he said. Based on all this information, and the fact that this quote was quite a long time ago, we can expect Vulcan to be fully expendable likely up until around 2025 or 2026. This is assuming they go through with the plan. When asked about the economics of the recovery plan, Tor Bruno responded, break even in two to three flights fast. In addition, in April 2021, he said that the additional launches purchased by Amazon for the Kuiper satellite constellation would require a higher launch cadence and that this provided support for the business case to go forward with the reuse concept. The specific large launch contract, combined with a few others, has ULA planning to launch Vulcan a few times a month. All reasons to support at least partial reusability. ULA made a deal with Blue Origin to purchase the company's BE-4 engines for Vulcan. At the moment, with Vulcan expendable, each mission means two more engines bought. It also means two more engines that Blue Origin needs to produce and provide in a timely manner. Beyond this, it would make quite a lot of sense for ULA to at least try to reuse these engines. Importantly, BE-4 is not only meant for Vulcan, but primarily New Glenn, a reusable vehicle. Because of this, Blue Origin designed the engine for reuse purposes. This means running the engine at a reasonable level to put less stress on it. Blue Origin specifically says, BE-4 was designed from the beginning to be a medium-performing version of a high-performance architecture. It's a conscious design choice made to lower development risk while attempting to meet performance, schedule, and reusability requirements. In other words, they're making this engine to be reused. ULA could benefit from this design choice if they start bringing them back. Another reason has to do with the BE-4 production and Vulcan's cadence. Tori Bruno has said, We have to ramp up. Before the end of 2025, we expect to really be at a tempo, which is flying a couple of times a month, every two weeks. To add to this, Vulcan has 38-plus secure launches with this vehicle alone a good portion of which will happen within the next few years. Every launch means two more BE-4 engines are needed. It's possible the total 38 launches require 76 BE-4 engines. Even just in the next few months, we're expecting another Vulcan launch. 
This is putting a lot of pressure on Blue Origin and their engine production. In just the last month alone, we've seen both Nuklin flight hardware and the first launch of ULA's Vulcan. Both vehicles require the engine on their first stage, seven for Nuklin and two for Vulcan. For Nuklin, not only has flight hardware been spotted, but the company has confirmed they are planning the first flight of the vehicle later this year. Besides the seven engines needed for that first test article, it also means the beginning of a consistent BE-4 engine demand from Nuklin. For one, it's very possible that on initial flights, the booster fails to land and the hardware is lost. On the other hand, even if each launch is perfect, they'll be making quite a few boosters which each require seven more engines. Ideally, ULA and Vulcan could minimize its reliance on Blue Origin and begin refurbishing engines which is a much faster process. It also helps with reducing overall costs and improving launch cadence. In the almost eight years that ULA has been planning to reuse Vulcan's engines, quite a lot of changes have been made to the recovery process. Not long ago, ULA CEO Tori Bruno tweeted saying, At the moment, component reuse smart is the most economically clear return to factory approach. Upper stages that are reused should do so in space. ULA estimated this tech would reduce the cost of the first stage propulsion by 90% and 65% of the total first stage cost. In 2020, ULA hadn't announced plans to fund, build, and test this engine reuse concept, though in late 2019 they stated they were still planning to eventually reuse Vulcan's first stage engines. One of the most interesting aspects of this technology and idea was a different recovery method that ULA was originally planning. Here, similar to Rocket Lab, ULA was planning to catch the bottom of the booster segment and two BE-4 engines with a helicopter as they parachuted down to Earth. In ULA's case, they would utilize a ram air main parachute that decelerates the payload. It would also provide a stable and predictable velocity vector that enables a helicopter equipped with a flying articulated grapple to approach from the rear and capture the in-flight parachute and gently transfer the payload mass from the parachute to the helicopter. The helicopter would then transport the payload to a precise location on land or sea for final recovery. In all likelihood, ULA changed this plan for something more repeatable and not as risky. Besides the benefits listed prior relating to the BE-4, in reality, the engine makes up the majority of the booster's value. When asked what percent, Tori said the engines cover around two-thirds the cost of an otherwise expendable booster and around one-half the cost of a fully recoverable booster. The recent presentation from Bruno helps solidify that they are continuing to work toward this technology and plan to change Vulcan over time. Once the vehicle is established and consistently launching, we can expect to see more tests related to engine recovery and the high ad. Eventually, it's possible we see an actual launch attempt and the reuse process in action. ULA is getting closer to actual Vulcan flight attempts with the engine section being recovered. While the vehicle started out as expendable, this is set to change within the next few years to make the vehicle more competitive and cost efficient. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.